I wanted to give you a quick update on you know what I've been doing on the new loco. It's uh, an absolute mess in my garage, but uh, these are the parts that I started welding. So this is the well, these are the two uh, bogies, and um, so these are 10 mil plates, and I welded them together, and then I started to fill the uh, uh, well, some of the welds with bondo. But it looks good. I like it. And you know, these are really thick plates, so they haven't warped. But uh, I think it's going to be, you know, quite nice. And what you can see here is literally my first and the second weld with the new CO welder, uh, so MIG welder. And uh, yeah, these are my other. Uh, I think they are quite okay, you know, welds that I used in the in the boogie. So. I'm quite happy with it, and of course that you know I had some big gaps here, uh, how the two plates join, and I didn't want to add any more heat by completely filling up the the valves, or filling up the holes with the valve. So I thought that okay, I'm just going to use bondo to uh, to fill up the remaining void because I think I have enough welding uh, on these parts already. So these are the two bogies. And this one is supposed to be the main frame of the uh, of the engine, so it's a nice plate, and the sides are well done. So I think that's uh, supposed to give a lot of rigidity. And I have also created these. Uh, uh, I think it's it's basically stiffeners uh, that uh, are going sideways, and this is where the uh, kingpin is going to go through. And there is another one for the the other axle or the other bogey and that's going to be the top of the loco and i have this um i don't know electrical box they usually have in uh, you usually find these in electrical locos and and again some small plates that i welded tech welded together and i already used bondo to fill up the gaps and uh, i already sanded it down and i have one of the sides done and probably you can see that uh, I have a window frames and that's going to be the door so there's a separate plate for the door frame and I tacked welded them from the from behind and these are the uh, you know the vents with some really fine one millimeter thick grills and this turned out to be good so this was my first try of our first attempt of uh, welding two mil plate uh, with the you know very low settings and I think it looks good and this is how it looks from the other side uh, as you can see I tech welded these a few places I maybe I need to add a few more tacks but uh, I didn't want to add too much heat to the whole plate because these are really thin ple uh, sheets of uh, steel uh, yeah it definitely worked a little but I think I will add some uh, more uh, sort of like plates or angle irons in uh, in here going that way and maybe one or two going uh, um, you know the up and down just to make these uh, side plates a little bit more rigid I mean there is no other structure than just these side plates so uh, it's not a lot so I think I need to add a little bit more material to make it basically just stand and as you can see I have these grills or these vents so this is one mil steel and the frame is two mil and this is actually bent and uh, you can see that uh, um, there are some slots here so I was just able to slide in the vents and I just used some tacks here just to keep them in place mostly just stop them from rattling once the loco is driving and yeah so window frame here and another door and of course I have a proper door and it should be I should be able to open so I need to just come up with some hinge mechanism and locks and well, there's still a lot to do and for some of the smaller parts I started 3d printing bits as well so this is going to be a sandbox which will go onto the side of the bogey so it's going to go here so that's where the sand is uh, stored and I printed them all of these hollow uh, because the idea is that I'm going to fill this up with resin just to give them enough weight and um, well the chance to you know stand up against I don't know rocks or anything that 
might damage it. So I have two of these. Actually, I have some resin uh, that is probably going to deliver today, and and I should be able to test how you know you can use uh, resin as an infill. Um, I think. Uh, I should be prepared for some sort of shrinkage once the resin shrinks, but these are not, you know, dimensionally critical. So even if it shrinks some, I don't think I would really care. So uh, yeah, that should be good. I also have some horns. These are hollow as well, so I should be able to pour the resin inside. And uh, yeah, that's it. Nothing complicated. Uh, these are just uh, some spray-on bondo that I still need to sand and probably apply a few more layers because you can still see the print layers. I just want them to, you know, look reasonably smooth before I finish them. So I think that would be all for a quick update. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next episode.